Hey friend, Mike McCurry here. Thank you so much for joining me once again for Bible Tract Echoes. I must state the obvious, I am in a car. We're driving again, and also, I have the prettiest chauffeur. And my wife, of course, is just, just absolutely thrilled that I'm including her in the broadcast. She made me uh, not give her a microphone today. She's not on the program. It's just me in the car. She's driving, which is pretty rare. Most of the time I drive, but today getting a little bit of studying done. It's been a hair on fire, whirlwind a couple of weeks, and it doesn't look to be slowing down in the very near future. But I appreciate so much each and every one of you that follow along with these broadcasts. And also, I hope what you get out of the Bible today and all this week has been and will be a blessing to you. We're in the book of Mark chapter number five. You know, it's kind of uh, pertinent and it makes sense to speak about this. We're going to talk about timing. We're going to talk about God's timing uh, on the evangelism trail. Often timing is important. I have slowly, I'm doing my best to learn that I can't just book back-to-back -back meetings uh, miles and miles and uh, hundreds of miles apart because I'm not as good at driving through the night as I was as a 19, 20, 21 year old. But, uh, so we're, we're learning that and also when taking the family in tow, uh, it's probably wise to leave a little bit of wiggle room there. But timing gets to be important. Right now, we're kind of bouncing back and forth between uh, two meetings. Uh, thankfully, both folks that, uh, that we're preaching for in both events are incredibly gracious with us and they both wanted me to be a part and so I'm, I'm just uh, pleased that and honored that I have the opportunity and so about to preach we're closing in on the end of another week of camp and also have another event that we're that we get to be a part of but we're excited we're having a wonderful time and I appreciate you for your investment of time in our ministry through this broadcast now I'm gonna ask you if you would to grab your Bibles and turn to the book of Mark chapter number five the book of Mark chapter number five. We're going to look at beginning in verse number 24 or thereabouts. We covered some of this ground yesterday, but I want to draw a little bit of a different thought out while we include the greater context. Remember in verses 21 through 23, 24, that Jairus, J Jairus, uh, Jairus' daughter, depending on how you uh, pronounce his name, uh, Jairus' daughter is home sick and he goes to Jesus. He's a ruler of the synagogue and he probably has all the money in the world for physicians but he wisely and he goes to the king he goes to Jesus and he implores him please come to my home and save my child and then we see in verse number 24 to 20 to 34 35 there is this woman with the issue of blood and we're going to read that passage of scripture and then we're going to continue on into verse number 36 and 37 i want to look at how god's timing is not always our timing and i want to point out point out that he's always god enough time. Actually, let's begin in verse number 21. Would you look there? We're going to read a few scripture verses. The book of Mark chapter 5 and verse number 21, the Bible says this, And when Jesus was passed over again by ship unto the other side, much people gathered unto him, and he was nigh unto the sea. And behold, there cometh one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jairus by name. And when he saw him, he fell at his feet and besought him greatly, saying, My little daughter lieth at the point of death. I pray thee, come and lay thy hands on her, that she may be healed, and she shall live. I think we touched on that on Tuesday. And then yesterday and Wednesday, we started in verse 24, And Jesus went with them, and much people followed him and thronged him. And a certain woman, which had an issue of blood twelve years, and had suffered many things of many physicians, and had spent all that she had, and was nothing bettered, but rather grew worse, when she had heard of Jesus, came in the press behind, and touched his garment. For she said, If I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. And straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. It's amazing. Just a small contact with Jesus will change everything. Isn't that the case? And Jesus, verse 30, immediately knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him turned him about in the press and said 
who touched my clothes? And his disciples said unto him, Thou seest the multitude thronging thee, and sayest thou, Who touched me? They're thinking, Jesus, how would you know that one particular person touched you? Everyone's around you. This is what we touched on yesterday. There's a lot of people around Jesus, but very few people taking hold of Jesus and really want what Jesus has. Verse 32, and he looked around about, and he looked around about to see her that had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her, came and fell down before him, and told him all the truth. And he said unto her, Daughter, thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace, and be whole of thy plague. But then we look at some more context to this particular story. Verse 35, While he yet spake, there came from the ruler of the synagogue's house, from Jairus' house, certain which said, so some folks or, or a messenger or servant came and said, this in verse number 35 thy daughter is dead why troublest thou the master any further what a blow this must have been to Jarius what a what an absolute crushing thing it must have been for him to hear this I, I mentioned yesterday or the day before on the broadcast maybe it was Tuesday uh, that I have two daughters of course my wife and I we have Emmy and Lucy and uh, actually we, we got a wave out of my wife that time can you believe that she really is just not the biggest fan of cameras and so she is reveling in not being on the camera right now I, I appreciate her taking over the driving because it, it would be hard to hold the camera and drive at the same time but just to think of the people that have gone through such a tragic thing of losing children. And, and Jairus is basically being dealt this blow at this moment. But I want to point out that God's timing is not always our timing. And oftentimes, when we think the battle is lost, when we think all is undone, when we think there is no hope, that is when God's work truly begins and he can really get the glory. We're going to look here, verse number 37, and he saw, oh, verse number 36, as soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he saith unto the ruler of the synagogue, be not afraid, only believe. If I can leave you with one thought today, uh, that would be it. Be not afraid, only believe. Understand that God works, of course, we know in mysterious ways. And you may say, oh, Brother Micah, that sounds so dreadfully cliche considering what I'm going through. But I'd encourage you, friend, there are so many, so many saints of God that have gone through such tragic circumstances, and yet God has seen them through. You see, think about it this way. If life were always easy, how could God get the glory? You say, oh, we, we, we would glorify him for all the good he's done. I don't know that that's really the truth. Oftentimes, God's graciousness, God's greatness, God being God, is shown through the hard times. I think of the hard times, yes, few and far between. We have been so very blessed. Our family has gone through. I look at watching those around me, those that have lost loved ones, whether it be a spouse, a mother, a father, or even children, and watching how God has led them so perfectly as they have followed God so well, and to see God get the glory through those circumstances. We understand that we're not going to have here on earth a bed of ease where everything is just hunky-dory and peaches and cream all the time and roses on the bed. Can I tell you, friend, life can be difficult. I'm not telling you anything that you don't already know, but I want you to, I want to point out in the context of this story that God always has enough time to work. I'd encourage you to turn over whatever circumstance you're dealing with to him. You may say, well, I don't see him raising people from the dead lately. I will tell you this, though. There is hope of the hope of eternity, and we know that should our loved ones die in Christ, if they know him, then we will see them again on the other side. I'd encourage you with that thought. Now, let me ask you this. Those of you that are listening right now, what is it that you're struggling with? What is it that you won't believe God for? Think of the Hall of Faith in Hebrews 11 and all those people, many of which went through dreadfully hard circumstances, but they believed God and their faith was accounted unto them for righteousness. I would encourage you today to do the same as those, hard though it may 
be. Now, tomorrow on the broadcast, we're going to conclude Mark chapter number five, and we're going to look at this thought, and we're going to conclude and see what happens with his daughter, and we're going to recommend that you don't question the master. Maybe you're thinking right now, this guy doesn't know what he's talking about. You don't know what I've gone through. You have no clue how hard my life has been. You don't know my family. You don't know my finances. You don't know the issues of life. Well, I'd encourage you with a thought that I'm going to ask you to tune in for tomorrow. We don't have time right now. Don't question the master. You can question me all you want. I'm not infallible. I'm not impeccable. I am certainly imperfect. But I will tell you this, our God is perfect. And I'd ask you to tune in tomorrow. Before we t uh, sign off today, I'm going to ask you to pray for our family. Many of you already do. Uh, we're on the road a lot. I'll be driving back whence we came this evening and looking forward to what God's going to do through the investment of time that we're putting in, but the investment of prayers that you folks have put in on our behalf. We're so very thankful, and we cannot discount the power of your prayers. Now, one last thing. I've mentioned a few times this week. It's coming up quicker than I can imagine. September 30th, we will be hosting another open house at our property. Lord willing, on September 30th from 1 to 5 p.m., my wife will be there, Emmy and Lucy, our two girls, and uh, we'll have uh, family and friends and folks just like you. We'd love for you to see us at Bible Tracks Incorporated in Odell, Illinois. If you'd like more information about that event, there's multiple ways for you to contact us. Let me just give you two. You can send an email to this email address, Open House at BibleTracksInc.org. One more time, just open house at the at sign, BibleTracksInc.org. That's B I B L E T R A C T S I N C dot org. Or you can text me directly. Have folks do that almost daily. You can text me if you'd like more information at this phone number. I'll give it to you twice, real slow. You ready? Three. 0931672240 that number one more time is this text me if you'd like information at 3093167240 now in these last 45 seconds or so let me ask you to think about when you do pray for us think about all the projects tracked projects that we have going on right now we're gearing up for another big project that we're going to tell you about probably in the coming days. And I can tell you about it right now. Got another one that could be well over half a million tracks, maybe even a million gospel tracks. We'll reveal that one in the near future. But we got tracks, Lord willing, uh, going to Mexico, to Fiji, Australia, New Zealand, uh, maybe Ecuador. Um, of course, all of the United States. We'll probably touch about all 50 states uh, this year. Let me encourage you to pray for those things. And let me encourage you to use use gospel tracks. I'm going to sign off now. My prayer as always is simple, that you have a great day for his glory. We'll plan on talking to you very soon. God bless.